Human beings are social animals. We depend on each other for survival. And as such, like all social animals, we tend to organize ourselves into groups. For humans, this group-based organization has certain psychological consequences. We tend to hold ideas or opinions about our own group and other groups. We tend to have certain feelings towards our own groups and towards other groups. And we tend to act in certain ways around and toward our own groups and other groups. In fact, it's a bit more interesting than that. Generally, humans tend to hold their own group in higher regard than other groups, like their own group more than other groups, and act more nicely toward their own groups than towards other groups. This was demonstrated by the famous Robbers Cave experiment, conducted by Sheriff and colleagues in 1954. The experimenters formed two groups of 11-year-old boys in isolation from each other for a period of eight days, and then brought them into contact with each other under competitive conditions. The result was hostility between the groups, evident in their overt behavior, their evaluative ratings of each other, and their estimates of performance by group members during the competitive task. And if you're thinking, well, of course they found bias, the boys were competing with each other. You should be aware that even before any intergroup competition, when the groups were simply made aware of each other's existence, the mere knowledge of the presence of the other group was sufficient to generate name-calling another derogatory commentary from each group directed toward the other. In a similar experiment, Doys and colleagues randomly divided participants into X-type and Y-type based on a bogus test. Even when the participants were led to anticipate no further interaction with members of either group, they rated members of their own group more positively than members of the other group. Bear in mind that these groups had no history, no variation in race, religion, gender, sexuality, or socioeconomic status. They had no reason to dislike each other, and never expected to see or interact with each other again. And still, intergroup bias emerged in their interactions. How much more should we expect to find it between groups that actually matter to people? Does this mean we should throw up our hands in despair and give up on the hope of peaceful intergroup relations? Hardly. First. Remember that groups are psychologically constructed, and as such, they can be psychologically altered, rearranged, and managed. Humans are much more complicated and interesting than a set of dots, or a pair of categories, and necessarily fit into a multitude of groups. For example, how do you feel about Christians? How do you feel about politicians? How about parents, black people, straight people, Americans, second-generation immigrants, and how do you feel about this guy? What's immediately apparent is that you can't just add together your feelings about different groups to arrive at your feelings about a particular person. Some categories are very salient and important to you, while you don't think about certain others. And even when you do, they don't necessarily matter. Intergroup bias is largely about how we choose to define ourselves and others, and then how we choose to manage those constructed identities. That said, there's no denying that sometimes relationships between groups could use a little work. Fortunately, even when groups are well-defined or imposed on us externally, and even when intergroup relations aren't very good, there are tested, proven ways of improving intergroup relations. The one I research is called intergroup contact, and if you'd like to learn about that, there's a link at the end of this video. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Keon West, social psychologist. Rate and subscribe if you like. Feel free to send me a message or even an email. I am, after all, a social psychologist, and I like to know what you think. Take care.